Hello, welcome to Wildcat Insider, your source for stories from grades 7, 8, and 9. I'm your host, Maria Angelicchio. And I'm Lainey Bozert. March 28th through April 1st was World Autism Awareness Week, and Miss Stevens and her class created a mural outside of their classroom to spread awareness. Here are Abby Kunkelman, Sarah Ginther, and Gracie Mahanes with the story. During Autism Awareness Week, we had the opportunity to stop by Mrs. Stevenson's room to check out her mural and got the privilege to ask her some questions. We also had the opportunity to make some ourselves. I came up with this idea, um, I was just trying to spread awareness the best way that I can. Um, this is my first year here, so I didn't really feel like I should be doing something very large. I wanted to kind of start small just to plant the seed and get the idea out there about autism awareness. Um, so I just looked up different, I actually started with bulletin boards. I was going to do a bulletin board in my class, but then I thought, well, let's put it in the hallway so then everybody could see it. So um, the puzzle pieces, obviously, that's the symbol for autism awareness. So came up with that, I guess, kind of off the top of my head. But yeah, we just wanted to make it very large and right next to the room so when they passed by, they could see it. Um, I really hope that the students would gain from this is to learn about autism, mostly autism awareness. Um, that's kind of what we have focused on this whole time is awareness and acceptance. Um, being kind to each other, helping each other whenever they need it, especially you know looking out for our students here who might need the extra help around the school or in class. So really the whole point is to just spread awareness throughout the whole school. So the first day that we started this, we actually only had about 10 kids. Um, I set up the Wildcat time to fit 20 and we only had 10 sign up. And every day after that, there was more and more and more and more kids that wanted to come and wanted me to pull them for every day. So we had a lot of kids who came here the whole entire week. And by Friday, by today, we had about 45 kids here. So they were spreading it around with their friends and they were coming to me and emailing me and asking to come and help. So. I think that they enjoyed building it. I think they enjoyed learning about it because I've also received more questions. So I think that they really enjoyed the project. 20 students competed in the annual reading competition at the end of March. Reporters Lucy Blachek and Alyssa Level spoke to some of the competitors about the experience. We would meet during Wildcat time and we would run over questions that we wrote about the book so that we could work as a team to answer them together. Um, we prepared for the competition by reading different books and practicing during Wildcat time by reading questions that we created about them. We prepared by reading about six or seven books from the list of 30 and all of those out of those books you had to learn to memorize questions and we competed to so you can memorize the most parts. My favorite book that I read was Confessions of a Murder Suspect. My favorite book was when? It was probably be Making Bombs for Hitler. It was about this teenage girl who was trying to figure out the was murder before the police officers did. Uh, my favorite book, when, was about um, a girl named Maddie. She could read people's death state of, of their head, and it went through a story t um, telling about how people were murdered, and she figured out how to help them with the case. It was about a girl who had to go to concentration camps and had to learn to survive and find her sister. Junior high civic students participated in the annual peep show. Here are some highlights.
Um, what inside my project was, uh, it's the, Ber the fall of the Berlin Wall. The Berlin Wall was created to separate East and West Berlin because the Soviet Union took over half of it. And the people decided that it that they didn't want the separation anymore, so they started to break out pieces of the wall. Um, I've always been interested in the World War II um, use of atomic bombs, and so doing research into it, it just kind of sparked my idea for my project. Uh, I was doing a bit of research on a bunch of different things that I can do and what have been done before, and I figured this was an underrated thing. The Wright brothers aren't really known for much except the first flight, so I figured I could bring a little more light to their um, genius. In our last episode, Lucy Blachek and Alyssa Level challenged you to an egg hunt. Here is a showcase of the winners. With PSSA testing underway and Keystone exams just around the corner, Aiden Uranic shares some test taking tips. It's that time of year for the PESAs and the Keystone exams. Here are tips and strategies to help you limit stress and do your best. First, be sure to get a good night's sleep and to eat a good breakfast. Take your time when completing exams. Read the questions carefully and double check your work. Be sure to relax and maintain a positive attitude about the test. Stressing too, too much can do more harm than good. Instead, have the mindset that you're going to try your best and you're going to get as much effort as possible. Good luck. We go now to reporter Alex Dominic for an update on the spring sports teams. Thanks, Lainey. The girls' softball team has been running the bases this season. Kiara Mongaluzo and Robin Riley caught up with some of the players. PT. PT. <laughs> yeah, PT. I think our biggest competition is going to be Penn Trafford. Me too. Same. Center field. Pitcher. Second base. I play third base. I'm a catcher. And I play first in outfield. I think we're doing good at working together as a team so far. Um, I definitely think we'll have um, improved from last season and win a few games. We're definitely getting better and working as a team more. I think we're going to do good. We're, we've been practicing a lot and just getting to do better as a team. I also think we're going to do pretty good this year, maybe lose just a few games. I also think the same thing, that we're going to do pretty good this year. I'm excited for the bus rides. Uh, that and just like the team atmosphere because all the girls are great. I'm excited for away games. I'm just excited just like to play with all my friends and get to know the 8th graders better and bond. Bus rides. Bus rides and make more memories. Moving over to the baseball diamond, Eli Boring and Dale Hennigan spoke with Coach Downey and some of the baseball players about their season. Uh, how's the season going to go? Well. To be honest, I, I, it, it's tough to call at this point. Uh, as, as you know, last year we had a, an undefeated team, and that, that is going to be uh, tough to du duplicate again this year. But uh, I think we have some good prospects. We have some guys that uh, look like they're capable of having good seasons, and uh, I expect us to still do well. Uh, I like coaching the junior high team because uh, a lot of the players, I see them from Little League and then they move up to the, the junior high team. Um, so it's kind of a continuation from that. Um, it's good to see these guys start to develop their skills and then as they move up to the JV and varsity levels to uh, experience a lot of success. So I like to think that, uh, that my staff and I have a little bit to do with that. My name is Noah Dixon and I think he's a great coach.
We're gonna go undefeated for sure. Yeah. I think the season's gonna go quite wonderful and we're gonna win every game. The track athletes work hard throughout the season to learn new events and improve their development. Here are reporters Jack Jeffrey and Parker Repko with more about the team. I expect that all of our athletes just work hard each and every day. A lot of them are brand new to track, so some of them at this point, we're still at the very beginning of the season, haven't done a meet yet, so they um, don't even know what events they're doing. So my expectation um, is that they find the events that they like and work hard at them and do the best that they can. I think that we're going to do really well, especially at WADA's. I think that we could place in the top three. My expectations for this year for track is to work hard every day in practice, be the fastest person on the, the lap, and you know, just come first in everything. Um, I hope fast. to have, yeah, to be fast. I hope we do good at WADA. My expectations this year for the track season and the athletes is to do their personal best to work and increase their knowledge um, in all the different events that they're involved in and just have fun this season. To jump higher. Uh, to get better at pole vaulting. The boys volleyball team is on the tail end of their season. Michael Vito and Andrew Hand spoke to some players about how the season is going so far. I'm middle blocker, back row. I'm an outside hitter. My favorite part would definitely be the bus rides. I agree with you, bus rides. Probably Bethel Park. Uh, Bethel Park. That's all for sports. Back to you, Maria. Thanks, Alex. While some athletes have some great handshakes with their teammates, Bradley Bodnar and Maddie Slater challenge students to show us their best. What is one thing in this world that you cannot live without? Gia Angelicchio and Sofia Bulova took to the halls to find out. Um, probably my phone. One thing that I can't live without is my shoes because that would be hard to walk with. Candy. Fortnite. Fortnite. Income. I'm going to have to say healthcare. The word of God. My mom. My phone. My lover, Cass. One thing I can't live without is my pets. One thing I can't live without is my dog. Food. One thing I can't live without is eighth grade students. Ha ha, just kidding. One thing I can't live without is my fishing rod. <laughs> One thing I can't live without is my phone and my Xbox, I guess. Books, of course. Basketball. One person I can't live without is Brady Prohovic. Orange juice with pulp. Next week is Teacher Appreciation Week. Noah Hoff asks students how some teachers have impacted their lives. Uh, Mr. Snyder has impacted me because uh, every day he, he's, he's really funny and he just makes my day. Favorite teacher is probably Frau Wilkerson because she is caring and understands. My favorite teacher was probably Mr. Scaff just because 
he made every he made me actually want to come to class and he made it fun all the time i've had a lot of favorite teachers but mrs belak because she was just the best and i love her i i, I would say that my drawing teacher for for out for out Wilkerson impacted me a lot and she's helped me with so much and, and I just appreciate her very much. My favorite teacher would have to be Mr. Snyder because I really enjoy his class and he also makes it fun just to like learn. Um, I really like all my teachers but my favorite one's probably Mr. Snyder. Uh, they all just are, they're just really fun to be with and yeah. My favorite thing about my teachers in general would be that they're very kind and very appreciative and very lenient with like work and such. They give up so much time during their day just to help us and guide us through our school experience. Yeah, they take a lot of time out of their own time to help us and teach us and get us ready for life. <laughs> life after school. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We all have our favorite moments in class, but what about the teachers? Alex Dominic and Matthew Marino asked teachers what lessons or topics is their favorite to teach. To teach in biology is actually what we're working on right now, and that is genetics. How parents pass their traits on to offspring, and it's always very interesting for the students to realize why they are the way they are. My favorite lesson to teach is teaching the eighth graders the Pythagorean theorem. I think it relates to a lot of real world um, experiences and I love listening to the eighth graders try to pronounce Pythagorean theorem correctly. One of my favorite lessons in English 8 is called Hoop Review. When we read a story, we play this hoop review game where we ask questions about the story. If you get the question right, then you get to shoot a basketball in a hoop for double the points. The kids love it, and it's great fun. Uh, well, first of all, my favorite unit to teach is the Call of the Wild. Um, all of my students know that. But my favorite lesson, we just finished reading The Lady or the Tiger, and I love to hear them debate the ending, whether the lady was behind the door or the tiger. Everybody's usually pretty sure about um, their claim as to what that ending will be. In this month's teacher feature, Katie Alba and Avi Mucci interview Miss Collette. Te presento, Senorita Collette. Hola, Katie. Hola. How old were you when you knew you wanted to teach Spanish? I was in the 10th grade, so I believe that's 15, 16 years old. I had taken Spanish since 8th grade, so I've had three years of Spanish by that time. What classes did you have to take in college? In college, I had to take some communications classes, a grammar course, as well as when I went to Spain, we took uh, conversation classes. I also had to take my prereqs, which were like history, math, English, in order to be a teacher. In Spain, what was your favorite part? When I lived in Spain, my favorite part was seeing Las Fallas, which is where um, people in Valencia build big creations out of like wood or uh, different scrap metal or structures and then they set them on fire. Do in your spare time? In my free time I like to hang out with my friends, I like to go skiing, and I like to travel a lot. Gracias. Hey nada Katie. <laughs> For some, being a teacher is their dream job. Mason Gresh and Mia Klasnik asked students what career they would love to do. My dream job is to be an architect. And my dream job is to be an entrepreneur and I want to own a cat rescue. Navy SEAL. Professional bingo number caller. President of the United States. Professional cricketer. I want to be a crime scene investigator. I want to be a marine biologist. Engineer. Flight attendant. Veterinary technician. Teachers. Teachers. For a little entertainment, we go to Tim Myers and Liz Wilson for this month's cat challenge. Hello, Latrobe. Today we're playing Face the Oreo. The goal of this game is to get the cookie off your forehead and into your mouth without using your hands. Today we'll be having two teachers and two students going head to head 
and the winner of their rounds will be facing off in a final round, and the winner will take all. So without wasting any more time, let's go meet the contestants. My nose gets in the way! Gosh, I can't do this! Why did you tell me to leave my nose at home? Uh. <laughs> this is complete ridiculousness. It's gotta be on the forehead now, huh? Can't be on the top. <laughs> Since neither of the teachers could win their round in a reasonable amount of time, we had to decide the winner with a game of rock, paper, scissors. Ian, that was a nice victory today. How do you feel about today's win? It was pretty easy. Took a little bit, but, you know, persevered, beat Miss Gasky. While only some of the contestants were able to enjoy the Oreos, Abby Kunkelman, Gracie Mahanes, and Sarah Gunther share how you can make an easy spring-themed sweet treat at home. Since spring is right around the corner, we got to make lawn mower Rice Krispie Treats. The ingredients needed are Rice Krispie Treats and mini Oreos. The supplies you will need are plates, straws, and scissors. First, unwrap your Rice Krispie Treat. Second, open your Oreos. Next, you will take apart your mini Oreos and put the side with the icing on it onto the Rice Krispie Treat. Then, you will need to grab your straws and scissors. After you do that, you need to fold the straws and cut them to your desired length. Lastly, put your straw into the Rice Krispie Treat. Enjoy! Today's Arbor Day. Here's Nick Pavarnik with more about why we celebrate the day. Arbor Day is a national holiday originating from Nebraska and is currently celebrated in Australia for the most part on the last Friday of April. Over the years, though, more and more people realize how important our Earth is for us, especially the trees, which is why to this day we celebrate Earth Day and other holidays centered on making the world a better place. Arbor Day is important for us to celebrate because of recent deforestation like wildfires and other causes. This is resulting in less area and places for animals to live and less oxygen for us to breathe. But if everyone planted a tree on Earth Day or Arbor Day every year, our carbon footprint would drastically decrease and so would deforestation. 
A good way to celebrate Arbor Day is to keep the tradition up and show your appreciation for oxygen and plant a little tree in your yard or your local park. You can watch it grow for years to come and you would be surprised how much the trees around us help filter our oxygen and the general air in the atmosphere. Arbor Day is also about a lot more than trees. They do recycling, widespread cleanup on towns, dumps, and so much more to help the environment from plastic waste and litter thrown out of cars or dropped by careless people. Hopefully you guys have learned more about Arbor Day and its importance to our well-being and maybe next time you can help celebrate too. Cinco de Mayo is next week. Here is Jacob Urbanic with more about the celebration. Mole, mole, poblano is the official gist of Cinco de Mayo because the day commemorates Mexico's victory over the French in the Battle of Puebla in Occupy Mexico City. The Mexican general Ignacio Zaragoza was honored in a very special way on the Battle of May 5th. It's all about the mole sauce on Cinco de Mayo in Mexico. Fish tacos are also popular too. Kids get May 5th off school in Mexico. These are all the interesting facts about the famous Cinco de Mayo Day in the country of Mexico. Another holiday quickly approaching is Mother's Day. Keiko Toscano and I share a Mother's Day gift idea that you can make at home. First, you will need to gather your supplies. You will need tissue paper, scissors, a stapler, and pipe cleaner. Fold your paper accordion style. Staple the middle of the paper. Round off or cut the edges of the paper. Fluff the tissue paper to make it look like a flower. Next, wrap the pipe cleaner around the bottom of the flower. And if you would like, make some leaves out of extra materials. Happy Mother's Day! Now for a challenge for you. Brie Hoffer and I created a game where you need to guess which celebrity has the most social media followers. Which celebrity has more followers on Instagram? Nicki Minaj. Nicki has 182 million followers, which is 55 million more followers than Cardi B. Will Smith. Will has 62.2 million followers, which is 56.5 million more followers than Chris. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick has 4.9 million followers, which is 1.8 million more followers than Joe. Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne has 311 million followers, which is 170 million more followers than his fellow comedian, Kevin Hart. Mads Lewis. Mads has 6.9 million followers, which is 0.3 more followers than Nessa. What was your score? Thanks for playing. April 28th is National Superhero Day. Jack Doranovich and Max Butler asked students about their favorite superhero. The Fortnite default skin. The Spider-Man. Gonna have to be Starfire. Superman. Batman. Batman. The Hulk.
Marvel has released 27 superhero movies, while DC has produced 28. Grace Navarre and Brandon Reno share some interesting facts about the most popular superheroes and movies. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of Wildcat Insider. We will see you for our final episode on May 27th.